Welcome to Crystal Waters International Ministries, where we are impacting the world with Christ's love. Today, get set to hear the life-changing living Word of God. As Denise L. Adams teaches the living Word, your life will be impacted and transformed. And now, here's Pastor Denise. Praise God, everyone. Welcome to Crystal Waters Spiritual Institute. This is a our teaching ministry where we uh, have a two-year program, which is uh, online. You can get that online through YouTube. And uh, I'm sure you're there right now. And this teaching is on the office of a prophet. We're in class number three. And uh, we're talking about how prophets invoke the will of God. I'm just going to dive right into this. I just thank you, Father, for your presence. Holy Spirit, I ask that you bring words to my remembrance. Lord, let the words uh, pierce their heart, change their life. Give them revelation knowledge. Give them understanding. Help them to use your wisdom uh, in the uh, teaching of this word. Whether they are a prophet or they're listening to a prophet, let this be a help to them in understanding the role of a prophet. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, for your help in this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, prophets invoke the will of God. The word invoke is a really amazing word. I like the way it sounds. It actually means to declare or to be binding or to put into effect. Um, you know, it's important uh, when a prophet speaks, the words are invoke change in the earth realm. They come from God. They're God's word and uh, they release them into the earth to invoke God's will to declare to be binding, to put into effect, and to uh, decree it. It becomes a force in the earth, whether it's for creative ability, for change in the lives of the people whatsoever. And uh, so we're going to take a look at the, how God invokes his will in the earth through his prophets. One of the first ways he does that is through prophetic decrees. I did talk about that by just decreeing God's word. Hallelujah. When a prophet or a believer decrees words inspired by the Holy Ghost, he prophesies and makes statements that come from God's very own spirit. Amen. There are words that, uh, you know, we can look in the Bible. It says by his stripes, they are healed. And when we invoke that word, we can invoke healing, impart healing into people's lives and make a shift and a change in their bodies that God's will will be done in their life. It's very powerful. It happens with prosperity, all different areas. Amen. God uses his prophets vitally. Hallelujah. Decrees can help to do uh, many things. Here's here's an example. And Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah the prophet was uh, being encouraged by God that he was called by God, that he was a prophet. And then even though he was young, God was going to use them, use him rather to do God's will in the earth. Uh, in Jeremiah uh, chapter one, uh, I'm going to read from 9b, the last half of it and um, verse 10. It says, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. God is speaking here. See, I have set this day over you, the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Praise God. Well, God is establishing his people through his word. Jeremiah um, didn't know who he was. He was learning about who he was and God was teaching him. Amen. God is so good. He loves to teach his people and show him things. See, um, to establish something, um, God's people need to be established in his words. The word needs to be established. And foundations are laid by prophets for people, for churches, for a city or a region, a nation, or even a continent. God will use a prophet to establish his words, even worldwide. Hallelujah. They set the tone in an area. They, uh, depending on the type of prophet, it may be for a person's household. It may be for a church, a community. See, there's there are uh, prophets that are just for in the house of God. And there are national prophets, there's executive prophets, there are different types of prophets. So uh, they all have uh, their um, their area, their domain where they're to be working, and they actually change the environment of a location. You know, you can prophesy in your house the power, the life, the ability of God. You may decree there is healing in this house. Everywhere you we go, healing comes to people's lives. Healing of hearts, healing of wounds, healing physically, healing financially. You can decree that word and establish 
that in that house by decreeing words in your life even. And the prophet has a great has a greater weight of glory. And we know there are gifts sent to us from God and they're his ascension gifts. The prophet is actually a gift from Jesus to the church for the edifying, the building up, the equipping of the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry so they can do likewise. They carry a, a greater weight with them and they're actually the gift where um, as a believer, the Holy Ghost gives us gifts, right? And we have the gift of prophecy, right? And that's, um, we're allowed to prophesy healing. We're, you know, we, we're given that ability to prophesy, to speak to areas that need to be changed and they'll be changed. Um, and so we establish things in the spirit. Another point to, uh, in looking at what uh, God said to Jeremiah is to build. The word of God will build up people. It will nourish them and give them strength to grow. Just as a, a young plant needs nourishment and water and food, so does God's people. And as you decree God's word, as you share God's word, as, as a prophet even teaches God's word, a prophet carries words that come from heaven and build up God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. We see that in the books of Acts, how the word of God built them up. Amen. And the word of God increased and the church increased and the people increased. Well, another thing that uh, um, prophets carry is the ability to, to destroy, to tear down and, and, and to create both in the spirit and in the natural. There's some things that people cannot destroy for themselves. There, some people are ensnared by, uh, you know, different situations by different spirits. Um, you know, demonic spirits will set snares, traps, and and evil communications to mess up God's people. But an, but a prophet knows how to dismantle these things that the enemy has set up and actually destroy and tear them down. Walls of fear, walls of doubt, um, sickness and disease, uh, any evil work, um, uh, poverty, destroys poverty and uh, releases people from the assignments of the enemy. Some are so ensnared they don't know how to get out. Now, as the word of God is taught, people learn how to get out and oftentimes they can get out all on their own, right? They prophesy to situations, they renounce or denounce things. But uh, a prophet is there to um, help those um, who need help and teach those who need teaching and to equip those who need equipping. And so there's a destroying, a tearing down and to create both in the spirit and in the natural, um, especially the young ones. You know, those are who really are ignorant, have no clue. You know, the born again babes in Christ, they they have no idea what they what's been happening in the world, what they've been entangled up with. But God wants to entangle them and God will use a prophet to do that. Amen. Uh, God will send a prophet for people's breakthrough. They they literally tear down walls, you know, uh, of um, um, people have walls that they put up for protection. And that's because of fear, right? Something's happened in the life and there's this wall of protection. But uh, uh, the prophet can tear down these walls with their spoken word. Um, you know, there's powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And they need to be thrown down. They need to be torn down. Sometimes you have to overturn stuff. You have to overturn demonic powers. And they're just really great at doing that. Well, another way that uh, God uh, uh, invokes the will of God is through forth telling. When you speak forth God's word of redemption, Amen. We talked about that. Healing, deliverance, prosperity comes to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, it's it's awesome how God will use that word. You know, Ezekiel was taught by God also how to uh, prophesy to a situation to see change come to pass. And that's that's a good word. I have that in our manual here, the whole scripture and how he said to uh, prophesy to, uh, to the breath, the prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the lord god come out from the four winds o breath and breathe on these slain that they may live that's in uh, in ezekiel 37 verse 9 and uh, verse 10 says so i prophesied as he commanded and the breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army and it goes he goes on and he talks about it but we see how um, if someone's sick and you uh, breathe and you prophesy life to them, you prophesy health to them, you prophesy they shall live and not die. What are you, what are you doing? You're releasing the very ruah, the very breath of God in the situation towards them. 
and it will not return to you void. Amen. And what happens is healing comes to that person. Life comes to that person. And uh, what the enemy was trying to do gets cut off by the power of God. Amen. So we can foretell um, God's redemptive word, what God has already set in place. He's set in place what? Deliverance, healing, prosperity, freedom from sin, um, all those things that we have in redemption are what we can prophesy to and God will will um, see it come to pass. And, and you, you have to you start doing that. And I remember I started with praying for people who had headaches and I could get that. I, I, didn't, I don't get headaches anymore. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I learned a long time ago how to deal with that. And so when you prophesy to someone, you know, headache, go in Jesus name, you invoke God's word in someone's life. What happens is the headache has to go. And uh, so it's great. You can do that to bring change to people's lives. Glory to God. Now, can everyone do that? Absolutely. As we said before, the prophet carries a greater weight of glory. Okay, the next uh, way that we can invoke God's will is by foretelling, to decree the future. These are words of wisdom uh, with the with the power within the cells to come to pass. They're creative. Amen. Whether a seer sees them, a seer is a prophet who has visions and dreams and, you know, open visions, closed visions, all different types of visions. Uh, we're going to talk about that in the end class. Um, and uh, we'll see how many classes we get here, but that'll be the end class, the different types of uh, prophets and uh, different ways God speaks to his people. But a seer will see in the spirit, whether in trance or a vision or a dream, open, closed vision, etc. And uh, God will show them things that either have to be changed or come to pass. He may be showing, there's a multitude of things that God can speak to people about. And, and as you learn God's language, you understand how that works. Amen. A Nabi prophet is a prophet who words start bubbling up on the inside and all of a sudden they start flowing out. The other day I was at a um, teaching a, at a uh, Bible study uh, for a group and we had some uh, women who were visitors and I had, was completely going to be going in a different direction. And all of a sudden I started talking about prophets and the fivefold ministry and how they work and what's their goal and why we need them and where they are. And I'm thinking, why in the world am I doing this? And I recognize, and I said to the ladies, you know, um, that's not what I was come to teach on today. And she says, well, I, and I says, I'm wondering why Holy Spirit's having me go this direction. And she says, actually, because I've been asking about the office of a prophet and how it works. And they showed up and they got more information. The Spirit of God was flowing through me to explain to them. And the words were just bubbling up. They were just coming up and they're going out. Now, do I have visions and dreams? Yes, I do. But what I'm talking is the Nabe prophet, well, that's how they operate most times. Is It just bubbles up and all of a sudden this is direction that the Word of God will go. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're to never despise the prophetic utterance of God's prophets because they it may seem impossible, um, but, uh, you know, but surely they'll come to pass. You just have to believe. There's a believing part involved, and um, God will surely do it. I mean, he gives prophets visions and dreams. Why? Because he loves God's people, and he wants to see them flourish in whatever they're set to do. In Acts chapter 11, verse 28, Agabus prophesied about the famine coming to Jerusalem. He said, there's a famine coming. God showed him a famine. And so the people got prepared and were ready to deal with the famine. Now, I, many of you might say, well, why didn't he just rebuke the famine, tell the famine to go? I don't know. But this is what they said in the word of God. I mean, you know, you have to listen to what God is saying and um, um, do what he asks you to do. Amen. Uh, praise God. Some of you will catch that. Uh, in Jeremiah 1, four, verses 4 to 10, the word of God came and the words that uh, they speak do come to pass. And the prophet must not be afraid. And many prophets are afraid to speak. And, and, and you know, uh, don't be a child about it. Don't, don't worry how old you are or how young you are. Um, but God will put words in your mouth. God will surely do it. You know, uh, we see Apostle John in Revelations uh, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 he was a prophet and he went into visions and, and he heard a voice um, um, beside him saying, you know, talking to him. It wasn't within, it was actually on the outside. And a prophet will hear the voice on the outside more than he will on the inside. Amen. So we're talking about prophets 
and we're talking about different ways that um, God speaks through his prophets. Point number two is prophetic tasks. This is a specific assignment given to a believer to deliver and to impose the mandate of God to a people, a city, a nation, and governments, and to the powers of darkness. They have a specific assignment, a task being given to them. The task can be carried out by a person, a church, or an unbeliever. God sent John within, in Revelations 1, uh, verses 9 to 11. Uh, he sent John with a purpose and a task. And uh, there was a purpose that uh, uh, Jesus showed him things. And he went and he declared the words. He was to write them down so that people could read them and understand them. There are people who have to do that, right? To just write things down and declare God's word. Amen. There are some people who cannot receive the word until it is invoked or placed into their spirit, right? There's sort of a impartation that happens, a word that will actually enter into a person and bring it to pass. It's actually, it's like it opens them up and allows them to move in a certain way that is imparted to them. Amen. Hallelujah. God is amazing how he works. Well, another example is when Jonah was sent to Nineveh, he had a... um a, a specific task he had to go there and prophesy um a repentance amen elisha sent uh, Geh- gehazi uh with a staff to go raise the dead even though he didn't do the job right he was sent on an assignment and praise god we need to be ready for the assignment because the assignment can come at any time and your heart has to be right you have to be prepared god wants to use you god wanted to use gehazi but he didn't uh, allow himself he he couldn't be used because his heart was wrong. So you always have to keep your heart right. So I'm interjecting things into this as we're talking. And I hope you're catching where I'm going with it. And I would really encourage you to look at these examples. Read Jonah. Read, Eli- read about Elisha and Gehazi. Read about how he was to go raise the child from the dead. And and the interesting thing is that the child was raised from the dead by Elisha. Um, amen. Hallelujah. Well, there's another way that God speaks to his people is through prophetic songs, singing. In Ephesians 5, 17 it says, uh, to 20, it says, we are to speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. You know, there are prophetic songs that are released at times, and those words um, come to you from the Holy Ghost. I know a, a number of different prophetic singers and uh, they write their songwriters. They get a word from God, and God is directly from heaven, and it's imparted to people, and it's used to invoke the kingdom of God in people's lives. Amen. Worshiping makes you sweet. I mean, uh, Zephaniah three seventeen shows us that God has songs, and He sings over us, and oftentimes He'll use people to sing to us His songs, songs of deliverance, of salvation, of God's goodness. Glory to God. Um, and uh, it'll be songs over even a region. And we saw the songs being sung by uh, Miriam. She sang songs, amen, after the deliverance of God's people. Praise God. And uh, that's awesome. We know uh, that um, God will use men and women mightily to uh, invoke his will on the earth. Well, there's another part is uh, prophetic writings is when God starts to bring words to your spirit, sentences and revelation to you. You can add scriptures to those thoughts, inspired books expounded on God's word can ignite uh, God's power into a reader. Great writers such as Kenyon or Kenneth Kenneth Hagin Sr. bring enlightenment to the reader and help to understand God's scriptures. Amen. They always expound on God's word. Um, A prophet is also a teacher. And they expound on God's word to bring about a greater understand, understanding and revelation. Hallelujah. Prophetic dancing. Well, I talked about Miriam, Miriam earlier. When well, we know David danced, Miriam danced, and Jesus even danced. In Luke 10, Jesus lifted up his hands and he spun around in the spirit when the, um, the uh, people that he sent out came back saying, Ah, oh, the devil's listened to us. And he was overjoyed and he spun around like in a dance, right? He twirled around. And uh, that's pretty cool. You have to find that in the Amplified to see how he, how he did that. But in that dancing is victory. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, 
We, we saw David dancing the dance of victory, Miriam dancing the dance of victory, Jesus dancing the dance of victory. I encourage you, you might need to dance the dance of victory even before you get the victory because in your dance is the victory. Don't ask me to say that twice, but I believe that is so. And I have danced sometimes in situations where it was life and death. And I'm not kidding. It was life and death. But there was a dance in my spirit that I knew that uh, a person would live and not die. And uh, and that came to pass. And I praise God for that word. And I'm even going to even lift that word up again for that person, that that person will live and not die and declare the works of God. Sometimes you have to keep reinforcing a word, reinforcing a word, and reinforcing a word. Um, amen. Um, the word can come down from gener- generation to generation to generation from different prophets. We see that in the Bible, how uh, Jezebel was overthrown and... Um, uh, this uh, the prophet Jehu came with the word, Amen, that was handed down through the chief prophets, and uh, what happened was he was the one who got to deliver the word, and Jezebel was overthrown, and uh, so it can be handed down from generation to re- generation. Don't always think you have to have the brand new word. Sometimes the old word that's in the word of God from a prophet or that you heard from your prophet, you can prophesy to another person and that word has a power and effect to come to pass. You know, in the body of Christ, we've got to get over this. Um, I've got the word. Nobody else has a word. and You can't use my word because my word is my word. But God just says, no, these things that you have learned, teach them to able men who will teach others. You know, he told Timothy that. Paul told Timothy, these things I've taught you, Teach them to able people so that they will go and teach others. It was four generational. And so as we teach what we've heard before, what we're doing or decree what we've heard before, what we know to, at the redemptive word of God. Amen. God put those words in place for us to use for deliverance of a people, a city and nations. And we need to use them. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. Well, the invoke God's word by uh, their the giftings that they have and a prophet has two major giftings the gift of governments is in first corinthians twelve twenty eight. they establish things the government of god right it's not the government of nations the government of god which is the spiritual things need to be we need to declare heaven in earth hallelujah heaven in earth and uh, we establish it by the word of god uh, they work with the body of Christ. They're not lone rangers on their own with no accountability and no stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are flaky, uh, flaky Christians doing flaky things who are not in alignment, who are not. Uh, they have nobody that they counsel with. They have nobody that they're accountable to. And that's just not God. God doesn't work that way. The government of God is seen in Isaiah 9, 6 and in Ephesians four eleven. The fivefold ministry is said in ministry is set in place it's a government of god together with the deacons of god to set up a strategy for great breakthrough and, in, and increase in god's kingdom in the earth if you uh, if you just have a pastor in a church and there's no apostle no prophet no evangelist no pastor oh pastor there is but no teacher what happens is the body is not full and the body is going to be lacking some things and it needs to be fulfilled and as we have everyone in place doing their part I mean, the the apostle is not greater than the prophet or the evangelist is not greater than the teacher or the pastor. Each has a separate role that is that is uh, necessary for the body of Christ. For instance, the apostle, yes, has uh, the ability to lay foundations and set things up. But, and they do have the fivefold within them to train up and to teach. But really, a prophet has specific eyes to see uh, a teacher is an expounder who will is that's what they do you know you go into evangelist church and all they want to do is evangelize that's what they want to do they want to evangelize and everybody should be evangelizing and you go into prophetic church everyone needs to be a prophet oh and then you go into um um uh, a pastoral church and we have this nurturing environment for the training up of the saints and the teacher is the same way of training up and expounding on the words and the apostle is kind of is thunderous you know and and it can scare the sheep sometimes because that's just the anointing they scare the devil they <laughs> they they really scare the devil and um sometimes they can scare the sheep and not me too Praise the Lord. So that if you have everybody in place, everybody has their part to play and everyone does their job and it, it makes it a sweet church that's full. It's like a 
fruit basket. It's got all the fruit in it. It's not like a uh, one-sided. It's not all bananas and it's not all oranges. It's There's a fruit salad and of uh, blessing, if I can put it that way. Amen. Hallelujah. I can see some of you smiling right now. Amen. Bunch of fruits, but don't say that, okay? <laughs> we can have fun and teach the Word of God too. Amen. And the also, uh, a prophet has the second um, strong gifting have is the revelational gifts, the eyes of God. They see things. Uh, the word of knowledge works in them. Um, words that have happened and things in the past. It could have been even 10 minutes ago, but it's things in the past. Words of knowledge about a person in their life. Um, then they also have words of wisdom and the discerning of spirits. They uh, These operate in those different areas. Uh, they also prophesy, of course, and that prophecy is invoking God's will. But also, so are those other things that we talked about just a second ago. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, a, Paul was an apostle, and he was a prophet too. And let's look at some of the examples of his heartbeat. In Colossians one twenty five says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. To fulfill the word of God. So he was made a minister according to what God had set up in the time frame when God said to do it. Uh, it was given to him for the people to fulfill the word of God. That's pretty cool. In Colossians 1, 24 and 25, it says, and I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, even now I rejoice in the midst of my sufferings on your behalf. And in my own person, I am making up whatever is still lacking and remains to be completed on our part of Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. In it, I became a minister. This is a part what you hear. In it, I became a minister in accordance with the divine stewardship, which is entrusted to me for you as its object and for your benefit to make the word of God fully known among you. Amen. That's pretty cool. That's what a prophet does. I'm excited about that. So prophets truly are God's agents for man's fulfillment and deliverance. Heaven backs up the very thoughts and desires of the prophet. You know, a prophet can speak a word and just because he's a prophet, it'll come to pass because God backs their words. They are prophets of God. There's a special relationship. They carry God's heartbeat. During times of tension, God releases these divine agents, prophets, on the earth for the preservation of saints. Prophets are God's eagles, shall I say, instructed to carry the eaglets into their inheritance. Hallelujah. They have, been, they have a mandate to rescue eaglets, to protect them, and bring them into their inheritance. At the word of a prophet, every obstacle can be converted into a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophets are sent to a group and with a man, sorry, prophets are sent to a group and with a mandate. Prophets carry burdens. They carry the hurts of people. Now I'm repeating myself a bit in some places here, but I'm doing that purposefully because I believe the Holy Spirit wants to remind you, inject into you the heartbeat of a prophet. There's an impartation taking place today for those who are called to the office of a prophet and for God's prophetic people. And I believe God is releasing words to help you to understand your calling better and to move in that calling with sincerity of heart, with ability, the ability of God, and with knowing that you, there's some things you have to have set in place. If you're out there being a lone ranger, I want to encourage you get back into the body of Christ. There's a church that will work with you. There's a body of Christ that will work with you to help you to fulfill your destiny in Christ. God does not send people in onesies on their own. He sends them in groups to do the work of the ministry, and he has people that are connected to them. Hallelujah. Well, summary of the prophetic identity markers is the word of God is with prophets. They carry words. Prophets are intercessors and watch over people. They're, uh, they're vessels in the house of God, the leaders in the church, or whole cities, regions, and nations. Prophets are agents for man's fulfillment. Every time failure invades the lives of people, God sends human agents called prophets to help to get them out of the mess. Prophets are divine messengers who carry words that heaven honors when they speak. 
Heaven backs up the words and the thoughts and the desires of these divine messengers. Prophets are divine messengers anointed by the Spirit. He or she is the official spokesman for God Almighty. Hallelujah. Prophets are God's eagles instructed to carry the eaglets into their inheritance. And the heart of a prophet is able to discern the times and judgment. Praise God. All right. Five different kinds of prophets. We have artistic prophets. They're psalmists and minstrels and writers. Hallelujah. And we have um, Nabi prophets. And they prophesy from the bubbling up from the inside. Peter and Nathan were examples of that. Shama prophets are intercessors who see the spirit and shoot down Jezebel spirits. Shammah prophets are house in- intercessors and house prophets. Jeremiah was a Shammah prophet. He he was uh, always there taking care of business. Executive prophets and apostles. Let me say that again. Executive prophets and apostles. Elijah and David are examples of this, and they are apostles. They are prophets at the same time. Even though apostles did not come until the New Testament, they are Old Testament type of the apostle slash prophets, you know, um, Paul was an executive apostle prophet. So we see Elijah and Daniel, they were in the old Testament and they really weren't apostles, but they're, they were very, they, they operated that way. They were prophets and, uh, they established things. Uh, so we see a very, very shadowing of what Jesus did in the new Testament. Then we talk about seers. Seers are prophets who do not not only um, prophesy by inspiration, but they prophesy what they actually see. They see stuff. They God gives them dreams and visions, and it's pretty amazing. Elijah, Elisha, and John were examples of that type of prophet. Praise God. Well, that's our, our teaching for today, and I just want to thank you for being with me today. I want to bless you today. Father, I thank you for your word that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, it is effectual and it's helping those who need to understand the office of a prophet. I may have gone quickly, but God bless you richly. Go back over it and uh, just check out the examples. I want you to study more. Study about Elijah. Study about Daniel. You have work that you have to do. I can't do these things for you. You see, until you make the decision to establish yourself, and not just hear a teaching, but actually crack open your Bible and study God's Word, until you do that, you'll only operate in a certain level. But when you get to that, I, uh, that uh, get purposeful and make a decision to pursue God and to pursue receiving revelation, God surely will give it to you. Absolutely. And I'm excited about that. We'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful, blessed day in Jesus' name. For booking Rev. Adams prayer requests or more information regarding our ministries, please visit our website at www.crystalwaters.ca. Message us at info at crystalwaters.ca. By phone at 1-778-285-1111. Post Office Box 52562. Coquitlam Center, Coquitlam, B.C., V3B, 7J4.